Good morning again, and happy Father's Day. It's been a just a beautiful week, maybe a little on the warm side, but it's been, a weather-wise anyway, it's been fantastic. And this morning, I got up and wow, it was just, just really nice, which made me think about that pastor that you might have heard about. He woke up on a Sunday morning one time, and it was a just a beautiful day, and he was really itching to go golfing. And so he called his, uh, his first elder, and he said, you know what, <coughs> I'm sick, I can't make it to church today, somebody's going to have to cover for me. And so he packed his golf clubs, went, I don't know, two or three towns over so that nobody would recognize him while he was out golfing, skipping church. And he got out there, and one of the holes was about 450 yards away, and he put a pretty good swing into it, and it was going, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred yards, and it was starting to go down. And then all of a sudden, a big gust of wind picked his ball up, carried it another couple hundred yards, bounced one time on the green, went right in the hole. Miracle, miracle shot. An angel in heaven and God was watching the whole thing and the angel turned to God and was like, God, why? Why would you help him to have this miracle shot? I don't understand it. And God kind of smiled at the angel and he said, who's he ever going to tell? He can't tell anybody, right? He can't tell anybody. This morning we're going to talk about our heavenly father and how he wants you, your family, to have the happy life, a blessed life. And we'll talk a little bit more about really what that means, the happy life, the blessed life. And I want to start out talking about the prodigal son. A familiar story that you may know about. It's a story about this, this young, rebellious teenager who... Uh, he was just over living with his dad. He was over the rules. He was over being in the same house as his dad, and he just wanted out. And so he asked his dad for a share of his inheritance. He wanted to go and explore this happy life, this, this blessed life. And so his dad agreed, and he gave him his inheritance, and he went away, far away. And he ends up very quickly blowing all of his inheritance. The Bible says he blew it on wild living. He had some fun and he had some friends while he had some money. But once the money ran out, the fun stopped and all the friends disappeared. And when he finally came to his census, he was broke and he was alone. And so he began, began talking to himself and he wondered, I wonder if I could go back home. You know, I've been a real jerk <laughs> for a while and really I didn't have it too bad at home. Dad was pretty good to me, to be honest, and I've just kind of went the wrong way. I wonder if I went back home if my father would forgive me. And he thought about that and he, he, he thought, you know what, I don't even want any special favors. Um, I don't want anything uh, special. I just want a home. I don't even care if I'm treated like one of the servants. At least I'll have a home where I can be happy and be blessed. The prodigal son in that story really understood what it meant to, to be happy and to be blessed. And King David, he wrote in Psalm 32, he also knew what it meant to live a happy, blessed life. It took David a little while, and he had his bumps, and he had his ups and downs, but he, he understood uh, what it meant to live this happy and blessed life, really the life that God has for you. So we're going to look at Psalm 32, really going to look at, break it down into three parts. Uh, the first part is looking at the goal, kind of what we're striving for to live that blessed life. And then part two of this psalm, we'll look at kind of what gets in the way of that. And specifically, sin 
transgressions, wrongdoings, that, that, that puts a stop to that happy and blessed life. And then part three of this psalm, we'll look at finally uh, what it takes to get right with God, confession, which leads to celebration, knowing that this is the life that God has for me. And so, verses 1 and 2, Psalm number 32, and God's Word reads, Blessed, some of your translations may say happy, kind of blessed, happy, the same, same, uh, same translation there, but blessed and happy is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed and happy is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. So this is what David was shooting for. He was striving for a life where he could enjoy it. He wanted to be blessed. He wanted to live the life that was worth living. And I would say that that's what we all want, right? We just want to... I mean, it's okay to want to be happy, right? I mean, hopefully none of you woke up this morning and you just thought, you know what, I just hope I just have a, just an absolute miserable day today. And then I hope that that snowballs over into just a really a miserable life for me and my family and everybody around. No, we don't think like that. Hopefully you woke up this morning and you thought, you know, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's okay to want to strive to have a life that's happy and blessed. Sometimes we think, uh-oh, we, we don't want to have too much fun. We can't be too happy. But no, it's, every good thing comes from God. C.S. Lewis, he wrote one time about happiness. He said this, he said, It's actually a Christian duty for everyone to be as happy as they can. So it's okay to have that as a goal. Uh, it's, uh, it's what God wants for us. David wanted to be happy, and he knew that in order to do that, that he had to be forgiven. And you say, well, forgiven from what? And David doesn't exactly say what the sin or the trespass was right here, but it was something that was causing a gap between him and the Lord. And that's what sin does. Anytime there's sin in your life, there's a separation between you and God. And that's not, what, that's not how the Father wants it. He wants a, a close relationship where there's not a, a big gap that's caused by sin. Which, that really takes us to, to the part two of David's psalm here. Uh, you go down to verse 3 and 4, and this is what David's talking about, the sin that he has committed, the, the wrongdoing, he, he's missed the mark. And this, he, he says here in these two verses, this is how I felt. And so he says in verse 3, he says, When I kept silent, okay, so he he's, has this sin in his life. And he said, when I kept silent about that sin, when I kept it to myself, I didn't do anything about it, he said, it felt like my bones were, waste, were wasting away. And I groaned all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, and my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. David would say, that's what separates us from God. Right? This, this sin, this, this transgression, it separates us from a holy God. And when we get caught up in sin, or, or maybe we just get caught uh, sinning, either way, our first reaction a lot of times is to hide that. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to try to kind of smooth that over. I maybe even cover that up. Of course, we also know the, the Bible says your sin will find you out, right? Amen. Your sin will find you out. Talking to somebody this week. A feller had taken some stuff that didn't belong to him. And it was a year later. I think it was over a year later. He finally got found out. 
I don't know if he thought he had gotten away with it all that time or what was going on, but eventually you get found out. And if you don't get found out by people around you inside, David says, that's not even the worst part of it, other people finding out about it. He said, the worst part of it is inside, knowing that I've sinned against God, and there's turmoil because I'm not right with God. And so that was what David was trying to get through. And, uh, but a lot of times we just try to, try to cover that up and try to hide it. Even though we know, we know that it's easier to, to tell the truth, to be honest, to be open. It's a whole lot easier to do that than it is to try to remember all the lies, right? Because once you tell a lie then you got to remember how you told it, who you told it to, and then you got to come up with another one, and it gets crazy. Some of you, no, I'm sure nobody here, but somebody out there, no, they know. I mean, you tell these big lies, wow. you got to really be creative sometimes to be able to keep that lie going. And even, even what we might call a, a little white lie, even those are hard to continue to pass along to other people. I was thinking about uh, surprise parties. And I know we've had birthdays and we've had anniversaries and maybe, maybe some of you this month have even tried to pull off a surprise birthday party or a surprise anniversary party but even those surprise parties where you try to get somebody to go somewhere without them knowing it i mean there's a certain amount of deception <laughs> that goes in to trying to get somebody to a surprise party right is that i mean you got to be kind of tricky in getting somebody to where you want them to go for this surprise and just think about maybe it's your spouse or a friend you're you know, you've got everything set up at this restaurant, and it's going to be a big surprise. Everybody's going to be there. But you've got to talk them into going to this restaurant early. And so maybe the conversation goes like this. You say, hey, let's, uh, uh, let's go to a restaurant tonight. Let's go out and eat. And they say, fine, good idea. And then you say, well, let's go early. And they say, why? Why do we want to go early? So right now, you're already going to have to come up with a reason, some sort of an excuse, why you need to be at the restaurant early. Okay? So now the deception begins, and you say something like, you know what? I don't know what it is, but I've just been hungry all day long. I am just absolutely starving, and I just can't wait. And they say, okay. And so you go about your business for a few minutes, and the next thing you know, they come back in the room and they say, hey, would you like a snack? And without thinking, you say, no way, I'm not even hungry right now, right? Oops, right? You're supposed to be starving. You're supposed to be just wanting to go to the restaurant because you can't wait to eat. You're so hungry, and now you're saying you're not hungry. And so that's kind of why surprise parties just usually, the person's usually not surprised because you're all bad liars. Good job. I appreciate that. And if, if you're an epic surprise party uh, organizer, you better check yourself. You may be too good of a, of a liar. But we typically try to, to hide and cover up. But eventually, all of that catches up with us. And we will eventually um, be called out with that deception. And again, it may be the same day. It may be a week later, a month later. It might be a year later. But that sin, those transgressions, are going to cause some problems. And so that's why David in verse 3, he said, While you're getting away with this, or it seems like you're getting away with this, you're really not. 
Because on the inside, your heart's not in the right place. You might not be able to sleep at night. You're worrying about who knows what and what they know and who you've told and who's going to find out. You're stressed. You're under pressure. And he says, you get to the point where you don't even have any strength. It's like, it's like being out all day long in the heat and the sun, kind of like this past week. If you were out in the heat and the sun this past week, he said, it's like being out all day long in the heat with no break. That's what it feels like when you're covering up sin. And so obviously that's not going to lead to a happy, blessed life. And yet that's what David wanted. He said, I just want to, I just want to live the life that God has for me and I want to be happy and I want to be blessed. I want, to, I want God's blessings to, to be on me. And it's just like the prodigal son in that story. He finally came to his senses and he said, you know what? I got to go back home. I got to get myself back home. David, he comes to his senses too here in verse 5. And this is the, the, the third part of his psalm. He says in verse 5, and he starts off with then, and so that's an important word because you've done something for a while, but then something else happens, and so there's a change, a transformation, something happens. And for David, he says in verse 5, then I acknowledge my sin to you, and he's talking to God. God, I acknowledge my sin to you. I didn't cover it up, and I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and Lord, you forgave me. You forgave the guilt of my sin. And so David understood that he had this loving father in heaven who would forgive him of his sin, would forgive him of his wrongdoings. And he understood he had a good, good father. He had a, a good, good father in heaven that wanted the best for David and he understood that God wanted him to have this life where he could enjoy it. Isaiah the prophet, he, uh, he understood that as well. A great passage, Isaiah 54.10, a great passage of Scripture, talks about the love and compassion that God has for you. He says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. And this is what David really, he was striving towards. I want to, to enjoy this life, but to enjoy this life, I've got to have a right relationship with God. There can't be a gap caused by junk in my life. And David knew that the only way that that could happen was through confession. And confession is a hard thing. Um, it's not easy. It's scary a lot of times because confession makes you vulnerable. It makes you admit that you don't have it all together. When you think, maybe people think that you do have it all together. And so you have to confess and you have to admit that you really don't. That can be hard and that can be scary at times. It can be frustrating to know that you've missed the mark, that you're not the husband that you, you know, that you really think you are. You're not the father that you really want to be and you've missed the mark and that can be frustrating. But confession, as hard as that is, confession is always, always worth it. It's always worth it. And if you just practice that, Practice that with a friend, practice that with a family member, practice that with your, your spouse. And I've said these, these four things before, but they're worth repeating because it's good. And, and these things aren't just something that you just memorize and you just pop off just because they sound good, but it's really, I mean, from the heart where you're able to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, please forgive me, help me to do better. You see how much I've practiced that over the years? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was wrong. Please forgive me. Help me to do better, right? 
And, and, and that's hard, and it's hard for, for us, uh, fellas, just being honest, okay? It's, it's hard for us to, to, to say that. And so if you just practice that with the small stuff, when the big stuff rolls around, it won't be so bad. You'll be able to say that. I said that just this week over a little thing, right? You're, everybody's like, yeah, let's hear it. I'm not going to tell you the, bad, the big stuff. <laughs> uh, just, just something small, and it's trivial, and it's, uh, it's kind of silly, but uh, our three, where's she at? She's over there, McKenna, three-year-old. She has a fascination with the Frozen franchise, the whole movie, Elsa, Anna, right? And so she's got the dolls, and she's been wanting that ice castle. I don't know if you've seen it before, but she's been wanting that ice castle for the last six months. Every time the movie comes on, if we see it in the store, she's wanting this thing. And she is relentless. I want it. I want it. I want this ice castle. And it's like, it's, it's huge. I mean, it would take up half our living room, and plus the price tag is it's, it's way up there. And I'm thinking, I love you, sweetie, but that ice castle is not happening. But I happened this week to stumble across an old My Little Pony castle. And it's about the same size. It's pink. But I thought, hey, I've got a fabulous idea. I come up with those every once in a while, and I thought, I'm going to transform the My Little Pony castle into an ice castle. And she's going to love it. And I thought about spray painting it blue, sticking on uh, snowflakes and icicles, and, and just spending a whole bunch of time on this castle. And then I thought, I don't have time for that. <laughs> so, so what I did, I went into the freezer and I got a bunch of ice. And I set the castle in the living room and I dumped ice on the castle, around the castle. Isn't that a great idea? Isn't that a fabulous idea that I came up with? Little McKenna comes in the room. I said, Daddy, got you an ice castle. And she, act, she, she loved it. I mean, ice, she was putting ice in the little rooms and ice everywhere. And she, she still loves it. Mom came in the room and didn't think it was that great of an idea. Water everywhere, ice going over the floor battery operated so it gets down in the battery and corrodes everything and now the little doors won't spring open <laughs> it was a good idea at the time you ever say that you ever do that you come up with an idea and you talk yourself into wow that is really a great idea it even it still sounds good to me still today <laughs> but now McKenna's going to the freezer and she's getting ice out and dumping it so it just didn't work out real great. Confession. Confession. Even the little things. And I know, again, it's hard to get over the fear of admitting some wrongdoings and maybe that you're not all that. It's kind of hard and can be scary at times. But again, confession is worth it. And the prodigal son, when he went, going back to that story, when he went back to his father's house, he finally made it back home, and he's standing there with his father. And he says this, he said to his father, he said, I have sinned against heaven, and I've also sinned against you. And he said, I'm not even worthy of being called your son now that's confession, and that's hard, but you may remember the end of that story. The father embraces the son, and he tells the servants, he said, go get the best robe for him, put it on my son, go put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet, uh, get out the party because we're having a big party, we're having a big celebration, because my son once was far, far away. And now he's home. He was lost, but now he's found, and he's not going anywhere. So the celebration was on. And of course, the father in that story shows great love and compassion. He shows a whole bunch of forgiveness. And those are th the things that our Father in heaven 
wants you to receive love compassion forgiveness but a lot of times it starts with a confession just being transparent open and honest to god about what's going on in our lives and so david understood that isaiah understood that certainly the prodigal son understood uh, that in order to have this happy blessed life there can't be anything separating you from God. Even you read throughout the Bible, and it was even hard for uh, for people in the Bible to understand how much God loved them. Um, a lot of times you read and it they just thought that God was angry at them and he was waiting for them to get out of line so that he could zap them. And I think a lot of people think that way about God too sometimes, that you, God's just kind of waiting for you to kind of get out of line, cross him on something so he can, bam, you know, toast. So, and so a lot of people have that impression and that idea of God. And, and I do believe that there should be a, a holy fear, a, a reverence, a, a healthy fear of Almighty God. He is creator, sustainer of the universe, right? And so there should be a healthy fear. But we also need to know that God loves little O you and God loves little O me. And when Jesus was asked by his disciples, uh, you might remember the disciples came to Jesus and they said, you know, teach us how to pray. Uh, we need to know how to pray. And, and of course, that's recorded to us in the New Testament in the books of Matthew and Luke. And in both of those Gospels, Jesus starts out this way. He said, you want to know how to pray? I'll teach you how to pray. And the first thing that Jesus says to them is, begin this way our father in heaven our father in heaven and this was really a turning point in how people looked at god and felt about god this was really when after jesus said that people then begin they begin to have this relationship that that there's a that god's my father and that i i can be a, a child of God and so there was this relationship with our Heavenly Father that was built from that time when Jesus said pray this way our Father in heaven John chapter 1 verse 12 says yet to all who did receive him and talking about Jesus those who received Jesus because remember, our Heavenly Father loves us, and the way He demonstrated that love to us is He sent His one and only Son, Jesus, to go to the cross to die for your sins and to die for my sins. Amen. And so, those who receive Jesus, those who believe in His name, John says, God gave the right for those to become children of God. It's not just given to everybody. But when you put your faith and your trust in Jesus, then you have the right to be children of God. And 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has, has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. David continues to write about this new relationship. He's really transformed after the confession. He's... Uh, He's, he goes into a time of celebration. Psalm 32, and you read verses 6 and 7, and then he closes with verse 11. He says, Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You're my hiding place. You're going to protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. And then David concludes in verse 11, he says, Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright 
in heart. And so let us just let David's story teach us not only how to respond to God when we go sideways and when we mess up, but also let us share that with other people who are going through some things in their own life. We also need to let this story teach us that we do have a loving Heavenly Father, that God's not against you, that God is actually for you, that He wants the best for your life, that He wants you to have victory in your life, that He does want you to receive His one and only Son that He sent, and He wants you to, to surrender your life to Him so that you can be a son of the King or a daughter of the King and have this happy, blessed life that David was striving for. And really, I think it's what every one of us are striving for. The Bible says that when Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. Free to live a life that's not ruled by sin, not ruled by trying to cover up some stuff, but instead it's a, it's, a, it's a life ruled by a heart that understands, yes, I really do. I serve a good, good Father, and He wants the best for me. He's, he, uh, he, he's made me. He created me. He created me for a plan and a purpose, and He loves me so very much. God stays close to you. He goes ahead of you. He's watching out behind you. And he surrounds you with his, his love and his protection wherever you go. Amen. That's the love of our Heavenly Father. And so let's celebrate that today, that uh, relationship that we can have with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ and just thank him for all that he's done, all that he's doing now, all that he wants to accomplish in you and through you. And so we want to, to celebrate that, and we also want to share that with others. I know this is Father's Day, and, um, you know, earthly fathers are not perfect, okay? We just aren't. We, 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 I, I think fathers do the best that they can with what they have. And so I'll just ask you, just pray, lift up fathers today. Help them to be men of God, that they would do the things that are pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God and would just look up to God for help, advice, strength. And so remember fathers this day, and I know some of our fathers aren't with us anymore. Some like, uh, like my dad, already in the presence of of God, already surrounded by the Father's love. And I just would encourage you to talk with your Father. Um, find some things to talk to Him about. I know, again, dads aren't the best communicators sometimes in the world, but if you can find something to talk to Him about. I know for me, uh, you know, with, with my dad, sports, sports was it. If, they, if, if the conversation would go dry or if I was in trouble or things, I was having a bad day, I could always count on uh, talking about ball games, who got traded to what team. Of course, he was a big Cincinnati Reds, Bengals all the way, so I had to be sure that I knew about all the, the players on those teams, but we could talk all day long and all night long about games and sports and players. And with our Heavenly Father, you know, we need to find some things to talk to Him about. Amen. And, you know, maybe it's, it's praise. Maybe you just, just praise God. Maybe you thank Him for all that He's done for you and all that He wants to do. Maybe you just talk to Him about some advice, some counsel. Hey God, I, I need some help down here. Maybe, maybe that's your conversation with God. But I think the main thing is don't ever stop talking to God. And guys, again, I know I've picked on you a little bit, but 
we sometimes we sometimes don't always do that find a place and find some conversations where you and God can be alone and talk to him about what's going on in your life even the the doubts and the worries and the problems listen God knows we don't have it all together <laughs> Okay, so talk to him about anger, talk to him about the injustice that you feel, how things aren't fair, talk to him about when you experience loss, and maybe you're lonely or you're grieving, there's, there's just, there's nothing that you could say that God can't handle, okay? Even in your frustration or your anger, there's, God is big enough to handle anything that you talk about him but again the key is you got to keep talking you got to keep talking don't ever stop talking to your heavenly father amen, amen. and where again our earthly fathers are not perfect we do have a heavenly father who is perfect and he wants you to come to him to have a good relationship with him so that you'll be able to say like David here at the end where he said, you know what? I am living the happy and blessed life because I'm right with my heavenly father. And just like the prodigal son where you might say, you know, there was a time I was lost, but now I'm found. I was, I was far away from you, Lord, but now I'm close and I'm closer and it's still a journey. I haven't arrived. I'm not there yet. I still need to grow and I still need to learn and I still need to draw closer and closer to you. But thank you that you've put me here where I am right now and continue to help me to grow. And so that's, uh, that's our prayer. And uh, that's what uh, God will do in your life if you're just open to receive all that he has for you. In just a little bit, we're going we're gonna to close with a song. I know we haven't been uh, closing with a song here lately, but I just wanted to close with a, with a song, a great song about really a loving father. But before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your forgiveness, your great compassion that you have for us. And it's, it is hard to understand just how much you do love us. Uh, but yet your word time and time again throughout the whole pages of the Bible tells us that you love us and you created us and you want the very best for us. And so, Father, we just stand in awe of you and your great love that you would send your one and only son, Jesus, to die for us, to take our sins and, and just cover them up and so that we could be free uh, and so that we could live in victory, uh, victory in Jesus. And so we love you. We thank you in advance for all the answers to prayer. Uh, just thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing and all that you want to do. We love you and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.